Welcome to Corgius Movius, a 22-year-old doctoral student working under experimental physicist Patrick Blackett at the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge, struggles with anxiety and homesickness in 1926. Oppenheimer, frustrated with the pushy Blackett, leaves him a poisoned apple but later retrieves it. Niels Bohr, a visiting scientist, advises Oppenheimer to pursue a career in theoretical physics at Göttingen, where he also meets Isidore Isaac Rabi and completes his Ph.D. Later, the two meet Werner Heisenberg, a theoretical physicist. At a conference in Switzerland, Heisenberg views Oppenheimer's return to the United States as an attempt to revitalize the country's stagnant quantum physics research. He starts out by instructing at the California Institute of Technology and the University of California, Berkeley. He has an on and off relationship with Jean Tatlock, a troubled Communist Party USA member, and meets Catherine, Kitty, Puning, a biologist and future wife when nuclear fission is discovered in December 1938, Oppenheimer immediately understands that it might be used to make a bomb. After receiving assurances from Oppenheimer that he has no Communist sympathies, U.S. Army General Leslie Groves hires him to oversee the Manhattan Project in 1942, during the height of World War II. Oppenheimer, a Jew, is especially motivated by the possibility that the Nazis, under Heisenberg's leadership, will succeed in completing their nuclear weapons program. In Los Alamos, New Mexico, he puts together a scientific team that includes Edward Teller and Robbie. He also works with Enrico Fermi and David L. Hill. Oppenheimer is grieving Tatlock's sudden suicide as the work goes on, some project scientists question the bomb's utility after Adolf Hitler's death in 1945, but Oppenheimer was convinced that it would swiftly put an end to the Pacific War and save the lives of the Allies. According to Teller's calculations, an atomic explosion could set off a series of events that would ignite the atmosphere and end the world. Oppenheimer informs Albert Einstein of this discovery, but Einstein declines to be involved, leading Oppenheimer to the conclusion that the accident's likelihood is near zero. President Harry S. Truman issues the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in response to the Trinity test success, which compels Japan to surrender. The enormous destruction and numerous fatalities haunt Oppenheimer despite his status as the father of the atomic bomb in the public eye. Truman curtly rejects his request to limit the development of nuclear weapons. Oppenheimer, a consultant to the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, opposes more nuclear research, particularly Teller's proposed hydrogen bomb. In the tense Cold War, his position comes into question. Oppenheimer publicly humiliated AEC Chairman Louis Strauss by dismissing his concerns about exporting radioisotopes and he also advised negotiations with the Soviets after they successfully detonated their own bomb. Additionally, according to Strauss, Oppenheimer insulted Einstein in 1947 when they were both visiting the Institute for Advanced Study. In 1954, Strauss secretly arranges a private hearing to decide whether to renew Oppenheimer's Q clearance in order to reduce Oppenheimer's political influence. The special counsel Roger Robb uses harsh interrogation techniques, Groves, Teller, and other associates betray Oppenheimer with their negative testimonies, and his prior communist affiliations are used against him. As a result, it quickly becomes clear that the hearing's outcome is predetermined. Oppenheimer's clearance is revoked by the hearing board by a two-to-one vote, harming his reputation and reducing his ability to influence nuclear policy. In 1959, Hill testified on behalf of the scientific community during Strauss Senate confirmation hearing for Secretary of Commerce, revealing that Strauss had personally motivated Oppenheimer's downfall. In private, Strauss was furious with Oppenheimer. The nomination is rejected by the Senate. As a sign of political redemption, President Lyndon B. Johnson bestows the Enrico Fermi Award on Oppenheimer in 1963. Oppenheimer never brought up Strauss during their 1947 conversation with Einstein, instead expressing his somber conviction that he had in fact set Hain reaction that would end the world, as shown in a flashback. Thanks for watching video subscribe for more videos.